Today, we're doing an international special interest piece that involves the core of democracy. It's a humanitarian issue involving some wildly unjust laws. When we think of India, we may think of beautiful scenes from Bollywood, or we may think of it as a place of sacred spiritual exploration. And while all that's true, it's also the home to one of the world's largest food supplies. Hey everyone, Legal Fox of Legal Fox TV here, where we have a love affair with the law. If you ate lunch today, you have farmers to thank for the almonds in your salad or the avocados in your ever cliche avocado toast. Farmers are like Santa Claus elves, or the linemen in a football game, or Cardi B's lyricist. You never see them, but without them, life just wouldn't be the same. Over 250 million people globally are protesting three new farming laws in India that Prime Minister Narendra Modi passed. This is literally the largest protest in human history. It's like the BLM movement on steroids. Yet oddly, we're not hearing that much about it. 250 million people. That's one and a half times the number of people that voted in the U.S. presidential election last year. It's also two times the number of Justin Bieber's followers on Instagram. But why is this a big deal? Well, the laws will harm nearly one billion people, or basically one in eight people in the world. Strangely enough, despite its sheer mass, the Indian media hasn't been allowed to report on this properly. India's wealthiest families have pressured Facebook and other social media moguls to ban certain hashtags so you don't find out about these issues. But if you want to continue eating, let's say, food, you should probably know what's going on with farmers. Rallies in support and solidarity of the farmers have occurred around the world, in the US, Canada, Germany, Australia, and other countries. So we're about to tell you a summary of these laws, but first, if you feel your brain is just swelling with interesting information and you want more, be sure to hit that subscribe button. These new laws were passed in September amidst the pandemic and cater to the corporate greed of India's wealthiest family cartels. The laws will, one, deregulate the agricultural sector without any price protections or any safeguards to the farmers. Two, give large corporations a disproportionate amount of control over the food chain. And three, remove all legal recourse for farmers against corporations and government agencies. Basically, these new laws take away rights from the farmers and give the power to big corporations who oftentimes don't really care about the farmers. Also, here's the kicker. The farmers, if they feel like they're being taken advantage of, too bad. They can't sue the corporation or the government agency that's taking advantage of them. What's even crazier is that India is supposed to be a democracy, yet they pass these laws without even talking to the farmers or their unions or their organizations. The ruling party used a mischievous tactic called voice vote to get these laws rushed through parliament. Even the president of the Supreme Court Bar Association of India called these laws unconstitutional and illegal. This past summer, the farmers started by protesting in their home state. But the protests fell on deaf ears. The farmers decided to move the protest to the country's capital, New Delhi. Now, driving to the country's capital seems easy enough, but the police did many things to prevent them from marching in. They dug 15-foot trenches on major highways, set up cement barricades, irrigated the protesters with tear gas and water cannons. And you can't forget, they hit them with batons. Wait, India's constitution says that their citizens are allowed to move freely throughout the country to assemble peacefully without arms. I guess someone forgot to review the constitution before running for office. It's not just farmers that are calling for the laws to be repealed. Across the country, people of all different occupations have organized some of the largest labor strikes known. Ooh, that's kind of hot. Come on, anyone with a passion about their convictions has a certain appeal. Come on, Moody, you need to take charge. Go speak to your farmers. 
I promise, they won't bite. So what's India's federal government doing about this? The short answer, nothing. The government has, as of yet, refused to amend or appeal these laws in a reasonable way. They canceled a parliament meeting and other meetings in the middle of the winter when they knew the farmers were sleeping and waiting out in the cold streets. The farmers are tough men and women, strong, happy, resilient, and often very good working. They're literally planting vegetables in the middle of the highway. At least if they need to be there for a while, they'll have food. But if it gets resolved sooner, they pledged to give these crops to the government, to the Prime Minister Modi, and their families. All girls, these guys and farmers are just so thoughtful. At least the vulnerable communities around New Delhi, as well as the police force, are happy. They've been provided with three meals a day by the farmers, all while the farmers are getting bloodied and beaten. So many of you may be wondering, Legal Fox, I want to help. What can I do? Unfortunately for the ladies, there are no mail-in farmer greens. But there are a few other things you can do to help. First, hit that subscribe button, like, and comment below. Not just for me and my channel, but to get this silent story trending. Talk about it with family and friends. Also, you can contact their congress by texting sign PZ RRDM to 50409 and it'll automatically send a letter on your behalf. To my precious audience over in India, here are a few multi-billion dollar corporations that are working with the government to exploit the farmers. If you support them, you may want to be considered. And everyone, near and far, we hope you'll tune in again to learn about other enlightening or arousing talks. Goodbye for now, my international scholars.